This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by NHLiberty.org. Hurricane Sandy was one of the worst natural disasters the East Coast has ever seen. Cleanup and recovery will take months, if not years, and estimates run in the tens of billions of dollars. Parts of New York and New Jersey will never be the same. Entire seashore communities have been wiped out, but the determination to rebuild has been lauded as courageous and admirable. Yet as with all natural disasters, Sandy raises uncomfortable questions about the extent to which taxpayers should fund the cleanup and the extent to which government programs create moral hazards. For example, FEMA and the National Flood Insurance Program, NFIP, are expected to pick up the tab for much of the flood damage caused by the hurricane. Of course, this will mean more federal debt and inflation for the rest of us since the program only has about $4 billion to work with and is already $18 billion in debt from Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. Many think there is a need for the government to provide flood insurance of this kind. After all, the market would never provide insurance in flood-prone areas at an affordable price. But shouldn't that tell us something? Shouldn't that tell us that it is a losing proposition to insure homes in coastal areas and floodplains often threatened by severe and destructive weather patterns? And if it's a losing proposition, should taxpayers subsidize the inevitable losses arising from federal flood insurance? The NFIP disguises the real cost of flood insurance in flood-prone areas, which influences home building and sales in such areas. Recklessly taking unwise risk when risk is underpriced is known as moral hazard. When politicians decide that private insurance premiums are too high, as with houses built in flood plains, the solution is to underprice the risk through federal subsidies. The obvious and expected outcome is more danger to life and limb when disaster strikes. Even NFIP has been forced to raise rates significantly in coastal areas and is now dropping second homes from coverage altogether. Many assume it is compassionate to entrust government central planners with disaster recovery. However, the greatest compassion brings results, not just good intentions. And we've seen how bureaucratic organizations like FEMA mismanage recovery and relief in the wake of Hurricanes Katrina and Ike. Organizations such as the Red Cross and private companies like Home Depot and Duracell have already stepped in admirably to help those in need, and we can only hope FEMA has learned this time not to impede and frustrate private efforts as they have in the past. Above all, my thoughts and prayers are with the victims of Hurricane Sandy in this tremendously difficult time and hope they can get their lives back together as quickly and seamlessly as possible. New Hampshire's State House, among the least bad governing institutions on earth. But even here, legislators plot theft and destruction. However, they don't do it without opposition. The New Hampshire Liberty Alliance stands in their path and stands ready to train you in the ways of the Citizen Freedom Lobby. Visit nhliberty.org to get involved.